Hey everyone, this is Dr. Sam Shea. Uh, I'm here uh, with a colleague of mine, Louise Thompson, and this is a very special interview. This is a colleague in arms uh, who deals a lot with uh, adrenal fatigue, and she's been writing now for seven plus years, is that correct? Uh, I've been a columnist for the Herald for four years now. Four years um, now. But, yeah, but I've been working in the wellness field for ten. For ten off. years, okay. So, Luis has been writing extensively on health and wellness, and I'm very, very happy to have her today doing an interview. So, uh, Luis, would you tell would you tell our audience, um, in your own words, who you are and what you do? Uh, well, thank you for having me here. Firstly, Sam, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, so, uh, I'm a, a life coach, um, I'm a yoga teacher, um, I'm a writer, um, and um, I specialize in coaching people around life work balance, adrenal fatigue, um, and getting them from a place of fatigue back to wellness. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Awesome. So, would you describe the the typical person you help with? You, the, your main audience that you reach and connect to. Like, what are the what are the aspirations that the type of people that you help have? Uh, so, um, the majority of my clients are smart, busy women, uh, which is why I titled <laughs> my book. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guide to smart busy women um, and they are in search of more energy um, they're the sort of women that are juggling multiple responsibilities work children family relationships they're usually the real givers um, they're the people that are always helping out everybody else um, and they're super well liked they're also generally really high achievers mm -hmm. um, so um, I don't see kind of surf bums uh, you know I see smart busy women with multiple responsibilities who are just ground out um, by by the demands of life basically and their energy levels are lower and lower they're getting irritable they're getting tired um, I mean some of them are fully sliding almost towards towards chronic fatigue syndrome but um, they are yet yeah, smart busy women who actually want to enjoy their life rather than just get through and survive each day um, they want more um, and that's and that's what I help them to do yeah, it's very cool. So how did how did you end up getting so focused on helping smart, busy women? I mean, what's your how can you tell us about your story of how you got to this position of, of helping other women uh, with their struggles? Yeah, well, I was a smart, busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I uh, so my um, coaching business has come very much from my own journey. I think a lot of us um, in the wellness field come from an experiential place. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so I worked in corporate, I worked in media um, for the Financial Times in London um, and then for the New Zealand Herald, Herald on Sunday and so on here. Um, so I was in media for 17 years at pretty senior levels, um, had big jobs, ran big departments. Um, and uh, it was, do you know, what? it was great. Um, I, I loved it. I thrived on it, and I, uh, I was successful. I, I, I really climbed the, the corporate ladder um, pretty swiftly. Um, but over a period of time, and I think that is the thing with adrenal fatigue, is that it can be this insidious, gradual creep that um, you, you almost don't notice that your base level energy is getting lower and lower and lower, and. Um, in the last few years for me, I, you know, I mean, I was the same as everybody. I've got lots and lots of responsibilities and a big job. And I was also setting up my yoga business and my wellness business on the side and training to be a life coach and a million responsibilities. Um, and I just started getting really tired, struggling to get out of bed in the morning. Like, I'd literally, the best thing about the day was waiting to be able to go back to bed. Mm. I'd get up wanting to go back to bed. Um, no amount of sleep relieved any tiredness, permanent headache. I was taking Nurofen like they were candy. Um, continual hyperglycemia, sugar shakes the whole time. My memory started going. Um, you know, my hair started falling out mm. in my handfuls. I, I, mean, I was just phenomenally sick. Um, went to the doctor a lot as you can imagine um, and they did every test I saw three different specialists at the hospital you know I mean everyone was super helpful um, but a day came where I you know I I, I just collapsed at work um, 
and my PA had put me in a taxi and sent me home and someone else had to drive my car back. I couldn't even drive. Um, and I was bedridden for the next four months mm. and I, I couldn't work for the next year um, because I was, I, was, I, mean, I, was, I was, I couldn't even dress myself. It mm. was, I was 37 and I felt like I was 107. And going to, you know, every test and hospitals and specialists, they, all my blood tests were normal. Everything's normal. Mm-hmm. And in fact, one of the specialists said, you're the healthiest sick person I've ever seen. Because my a, a dubious compliment, okay. Yeah, I'm like, that's great. Um, you know, my blood pressure was 80 over 49. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, okay. right? You know, I mean, in Grey's Anatomy, they're like, call a crash cart. Um, and even with 20 symptoms like that, the medical profession couldn't, even with the best will in the world, really identify what was wrong with me. And it was at that point that I stumbled lying in bed, you know, it's over Dr. James Wilson's um, adrenal fatigue site. And I went through and I ticked like almost every box. My score for adrenal fatigue was off the severe end of severe <laughs> adrenal fatigue. So that was really the biggest turning point for me was um, I just started to realize with the life coach training that I'd done, my psychology degree, the yoga teacher training, and then Dr. Wilson supplements that actually I kept looking for the answer to be out there, you know, at the doctor's office somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, the answer was actually inside me. And what had happened is, you know, I had a great job. And yeah, it's a stressful job when you run newspapers. Um, You know, I had 44 press deadlines a week at one point. That's that's a a busy. Okay. Oh, no. um, so um, it wasn't that it wasn't the job that was the problem you had a great job the problem was the way that I was thinking about my life the whole time oh my god I don't have time I've got to get this done I've got to get that done I've got to do this and I don't have time for that oh that's going to go wrong <gasps> what's that email oh my god who does that person oh my god I'm never going to get that done and it was the way that I was mentally and emotionally and spiritually managing my life that was meaning that I was putting exercise down the to-do list, um, and spiritual connection down the to-do list, emotional processing down the to-do list, and it, was, it wasn't the job that was the problem, or my life that was the problem, it was what was going on in here. And so, once I'd figured that out, I was able to actually start recovering really quite quickly. I used the coaching tools that I've been trained in, in in a different way, specific to adrenal fatigue. I added in some of the spiritual elements that I'd learned in my yoga teacher training with my yoga business and my yoga students, and added in Dr. Wilson's amazing supplements, which you will know of well. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, and I was better, and I was well. And then it was just this: people just started. Oh my God, my sister's got. I think what you had. Could you help her? Mm-hmm. And then, oh, my, you know, my best friend, I think she, and then there was just this path of people. And it just became a case of each time I could get people on the road who were ready to do the work. I mean, that's key, right? Um, They were getting better faster and faster. And it was almost just like a formula, really. Um, And so now I'm super grateful for (laughs) what happened to me. Uh, I don't want to repeat it. Um, (laughs) But um, it's led to this, you know, being able to write a book, um, being able to have a newspaper column, being able to work in the field of wellness and every day get emails from people going, oh my God, I've read your book and it's resonated so much with me and I'm doing the tools and I'm already feeling better. Um, you know, it makes everything, everything worth it. Um, so, that's that's yeah, amazing. That, that's, a, that's quite a journey. You're, build, you're going from base, from total literally collapsing Mm -hmm. to being bedridden to then finding your solution and then getting yourself better and in the process creating whole frameworks and systems to help others uh, who are in you know like you said a smart busy women who are going through their version of what you went through and helping them let me ask you a question what are the three top myths that you see smart busy women go through uh, when they're trying to get themselves better from this severe adrenal fatigue? Uh, I think, um, firstly, there's the, 
my needs don't matter as much as everyone else's. <laughs> uh, you know, I can sort my body out later. I'll just get through today. You know, I'll just have another coffee and that'll fix it. And that I can just keep all these balls in the air and keep putting my own physical and emotional needs down the to-do list. Um, and actually, ultimately, what my journey shows is you can't do that. There becomes a point where your body will actually say that's enough. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I, it, it's, you know, I guess my mission is for women to turn things around way faster than I did. You know, my body got to the point where it collapsed on the floor in my office, but actually it had been going like that, <laughs> whispering and then shouting a bit louder at me for years. And so, um, you know, I definitely see that, that there's, there's the myth that other people's needs are more important than mine. Um, and and that's that's hugely significant. That's a big part of the the work that we do um, in the program. Um, I think um, that I also see uh, this whole um, the answer is out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, if only my husband would be more helpful, or my job would be less stressful, um, or my doctor could figure it out um, and give me a pill, then everything in here would be okay. Whereas actually, the minute I dropped the expectation that anything out here needed to be different and took the power to in here to say, actually, I can control what I think, I can process my emotions in a different way, I can prioritize in a different way, I can completely control what goes into my body, I can control how much I move, my, how much I rest. And then I started to get better and get my energy back super, super quickly. You know, it's 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 the answers inside. It's not it's not outside. So we have a lot more power and control than we think we do. Mm. Um, and I think the third myth actually is well, actually I think there's loads, but um, just <laughs> three um, is that um, that tiredness and adrenal fatigue and then even chronic fatigue is just something that we just have to manage. You know, whereas I don't believe that. I believe it's something we can recover from absolutely. And we can be healthier and more energetic and more vital than we actually were before. And I see that all the time with my clients. They're just like, oh my God, I didn't even realize how sick I felt until now I feel better because I'd obviously felt tired for so long, you know, that it became normal. So I think we have normalized in society the kind of the grinding through and that when we feel tired, the solution is have a coffee. You know, whereas it's not. There's the, when you're tired, that's a message from your body that you need to pay attention to. It's not an advert from Starbucks, you know. So um, I, 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 I believe in that hugely. That it's about us listening to our bodies and, and honoring and respecting our bodies. And then we get so much more back, you know. So, um, yeah, and I, I think... Probably the only other thing on that that I would say is that smart, busy women can only work with tools and systems and supplement stuff that are easy and quick and easy to implement. And so all of the work that I do are, are doesn't mean that it's easy. You know, some of it works deep and it's challenging, but it's got to be easy to implement. Otherwise, you're giving a woman who's juggling loads and loads of things even more things to juggle. So. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. say, say more about that? What are the solutions and frameworks you've come up with to support smart, busy women to have a full recovery? What are the programs and what, like, can you describe how you structure it for these smart, busy women? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much in there. It's really sort of hard to break it down, but essentially it's, it's kind of under the three elements of mind, body, and spirit. And where... I think a lot of the focus usually is when someone goes to see whatever kind of practitioner, whether it's an alternative practitioner or a medical practitioner about tiredness or fatigue or loss of their mojo, is all of the focus is on body. Yeah. Right? And it's, 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 it's <laughs> what are the symptoms and take the supplement, do this, da, 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 and it's just, it's very, very body focused. And that actually for me is, it's important, clearly, but it's only actually one element. Mm -hmm. So being able to bring in the mind component 
is absolutely massive. So a huge part of the work in the program and in my book um, is about learning different thought techniques. So I have um, in the book what I call 10 junk food thoughts um, because it's the equivalent each time, you know, if we ate McDonald's for breakfast, lunch and dinner, obviously, you know, we put on weight. Um, if we feed our mind junk food thoughts, we get stressed and fatigued. It's the same thing. So it's thoughts like, I'm not good enough, or I don't have enough time, or perfectionism, or people pleasing, or um, approval junkies, um, or the adrenaline rush. I was a real adrenaline rush, you know, press deadlines. Oh, I'm really important, I'm needed, I'm busy. You know, um, so all of these are kind of junk food thought patterns. So it's taking people through how to kind of, if you like, break each of those at a time and replace it with kind of a green smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of mental work that goes in um, and tools around how to process emotions um, in a way that actually means that you release them and you're not actually just. Um, pushing them down with whether it's food or a lot of wine um, or whatever it, whatever the jug of choice might be or overworking which obviously was a great one for me um, so there's the body stuff the mind stuff um, and then spirit and spirit so important um, and so for, for that perspective reigniting women's spiritual connection with themselves, with their inner voice, with their hopes, with their dreams. Um, rather, they can, you, you ask, you can ask them. You know, what's your uh, mother's dream, part, uh, partner's dream, son's dream, daughter's dream, sister's dream, and they'll be able to tell you all of that. And then I'll say, and what do you really want? No idea. <laughs> you know. And so it's being able to get that reconnection and find, call back those missing pieces of themselves and spiritually connect. And so it's, a, it's some techniques that are actually drawn a lot on Eastern wisdom. So um, some yoga techniques, some breathing techniques, some meditation, um, and um, yeah, and spiritual reconnection. And when you add that mind, body, and spirit together, um, that's that's what the high energy happiness program is. So it's about tools that women will have for the rest of their life, not just here's something that you're going to do for six weeks. You know, it's mm -hmm. things that become just a way of life and an easier way to live life, really. More joyful, more flow, and obviously a lot more energy. Excellent. So it sounds very comprehensive and that if it's in the if it's in the book, it's in an online course format, then it's something that's easy to refer back to and people can go at their own pace and with yeah. just have it be comprehensive without overwhelming. And that's yeah, real important. Really, really, really conscious of that because yeah. I knew when I was super sick that you know I was <laughs> I was like a koala. I was sleeping about eighteen hours a day. It was it was absolutely it was sort of like being in a coma, but without being in a coma. Um, and so you know, there's only so much you can take in at that point. So mm -hmm. when I created all the resources, I wanted it to be this thing you can dip in, you can dip out, you can take it at your own pace. And the book, um, and Penguin who published... Um, can you, you just hold it a touch higher? There you go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> um, when I wrote the book, they were very supportive of the fact that I didn't want it to be a book. I mean, obviously I want people to read the book, but I want it to be a book that people do. Mm -hmm. you know, because getting your energy back is an is an active process. It's not passive. And so, in the book, you've got loads of kind of worksheets and um, like diagrams and stuff as you're working through. You can see that, right? I can see that. Yeah. So that people can connect to their own unique triggers and situations as they're using the tools, working through the book, working through the program. Um, so it becomes completely specific to their journey. It's like their own healing workbook. Um, so it's not just something you read, it's something that you do. Mm -hmm. And I've also got in there, um, which I love, um, some of my clients, I approach them to because uh, whether they'd be happy for me to include some of their stories anonymous, anonymously, obviously, in the book. And so you can see that when it says, uh, is it a Polly story? Mm -hmm. um, and what's so, plus there's nine client stories in here, um, and what's so great is almost all of the emails when I'm speaking at an event, people say, oh my God, that woman in your book, the one with the four children and the job, oh, 
I so related to her, that was exactly da 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 or oh my god, the woman that did that thing and then with her husband and then she was overworking up. And it, those personal stories are what people really, you know, really, really connect to. And you can look at that and say, well, if she managed to get herself from here to here, and she got herself from here to I can do it too, you know? So, um, yeah, it's a real blend of, of information, obviously, um, tools, and, and in ordinary women's incredible journeys from here to here to here. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, to be able to help people like that and to scale it in a way to help people on a large scale, that's that's marvelous. And it must be so gratifying and reassuring and confirming to have, uh, you know, wherever you're going, small small pockets or small armies of women come up to you and relate to that and, and re make reports of getting better for themselves as well. For... for uh, for people who are just starting out on their journey uh, to recovery of, of adrenal fatigue and not just recovery but rejuvenation, what's the most common mistake or one or two mistakes uh, that they make that you've noticed? Um, that they, they, um, they start to feel better quite quickly and they're like, oh my God, I felt really crappy for like three years and now I've been with and I've gone here to here. And so then they'll be like, oh, it's all good. I don't need to keep doing the things. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're probably familiar with that oh, one. Oh, very, right? yeah. <laughs> so um, my, uh, my most um, successful client are the ones that they keep working the program, you know, and they'll get to a point that they're just like, this is just how I live my life now, you know. I prioritize my bio, I, I process my emotions. I take my supplements. I eat well. You know, I say no to events. I don't try and keep my mother and everybody absolutely happy all the time. So it's the ones that really are ready to do the work mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, and, and see it through, um, which is the vast majority actually, but it, it really is those people that quit too soon. They see the results too, too quickly and then they think that they don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, that sometimes can be um, a little bit of a mistake but really the biggest mistake I actually see is people not starting really you know, is that new normal is just oh I'll just have another coffee it'll be all right hang on I'll just have a couple of wines to wind down I'll deal with it later once I've got through the grad you know my son's graduation or mm -hmm. once I get promoted I'll deal with it or when the mortgage is paid or, or whatever is the deferring actually taking control and saying you know I can feel so much better in my body and my skin than I do now, and I'm going to start now. Um, I think that's the biggest mistake: is not seizing the day. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I've I've had I've seen patients that they they start to get better really fast, and then they overdo, particularly over a weekend, and yeah. then come back and are really upset with me, like it didn't work, and not only did it not work, they got a taste of what it was like, and then it crashed, and yeah. and. When that, whenever that happens, I let them vent, and I sit there quietly. And then I say, "Okay, so tell me how you overdid it this past weekend." And then they go really quiet, and then change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I mean, I actually put a chapter in my book about don't fall down the rabbit re re relapse rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so to just step forward. But yeah, I just tell you about one client who she's because she's just springing to mind where. Mm -hmm. It was almost the opposite of that. So she was super diligent with her tools. She, when she came to see me, um, two, two small boys um, and um, working in marketing at quite a senior level and just juggle, juggle, juggle. She's an expat, so she hasn't got much family support here. Lovely husband, but you know, mm. not, you know, no grandma on tap order. Um, and she was dragging herself through every day, like just, you know, having to put the kids in front of the telly just so she could be horizontal and lie down and just, she would just, she could barely get through the days and she was napping more than her small child. She was just on her knees. And um, so when would she have been coming to see me? Maybe August, September, we started working together. And then um, her last session, um, she came in, she's going, well, 
Um, I went to my work Christmas party, and then the next day I went to my husband's work Christmas party, and then the next weekend that 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 weekend we went away up to our batch, and we had a weekend away just the two of us, and we organised childcare and. You know, we're having sex again, but I went to two parties in a row, and I went to work, and, she, and do you know what, it wasn't until we were driving back that I realised I hadn't thought about my energy levels. The whole time I'd just been having fun. Wow. And she said, that used to be literally all day, it'd be like, oh, how can I get, will I be able to get through till tea time? I'll just get to tea time, and then I've just got to get through till bedtime. And then, oh, I've just got to get through this meeting, and then maybe I can put my head down for half an hour. And it used to be her whole day was managing her energy. Mm. And she I just had this incredible three days where I didn't even think about it at all. Mm. That's you amazing. Know? It is, it is. And it just shows what's possible when you you just take ownership of it, you know? Um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was lovely. She bought me a really lovely bottle of French champagne for Christmas. So it's great. <laughs> so what, what's the first piece of advice you'd have for people who are just getting started? Uh, I would say start with Dr. Wilson's Adrenal Fatigue Questionnaire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm sure you've covered that off with your people. And obviously, always start with your doctor because fatigue can be the symptom of you know some seriously scary things um, that you need to rule out. Um, so you have to rule that out before you rule adrenal fatigue in. Once you've ruled adrenal fatigue in, um, the first two things you need to do are get Dr. Wilson's supplements, um, but then get my book um, and the e-program and just start working, start working through. So you're taking the supplements and starting to replenish physically, mm -hmm. which gives you incrementally more energy each day to be working through the exercises in the book in the e-program um, and 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 just do just follow the formula basically and do you have a and then you just launched a, a membership program for people as well yeah um this is super exciting so um it only launched uh first of december um so um i have a sort of a general happiness and well-being uh membership group called well-being warriors uh which is centered around um the four uh, principles, uh, which are strong body, mm -hmm. kind heart, mm -hmm. fierce mind, and brave spirit. Mm. That's um, yeah. Um, so, with my work um, and with my column in the, the New Zealand Herald on Mondays, um, obviously not everyone's suffering from adrenal fatigue, right? Uh, great. Um, so they're just interested in being healthier and happier, and that's what uh, Wellbeing Warriors is about. So every uh, month, um, it's um, a bite-sized um, tool and technique that's a little video of me talking, um, and then there's um, all sorts of other goodies that go along with that. Um, so our first month, we did it around the theme of empowered choice. Um, this month, we've done it around the theme of loving your body. Mm -hmm. um, so we're dealing with, again, it's a women-specific group. Um, it's about self-esteem. It's about better relationships. It's about better health. It's about being happier. It's about worrying less. Um, and so we have this incredibly vibrant um, Facebook uh, group where I set every day. There's um, a 30-day challenge that goes with each module each month. Um, and each morning I post a new um, little tiny snippet of something to think about or something to do um, that moves people forward. So it's an annual membership. So over 365 days, it's like a little drip feed mm -hmm. of wellness and happiness. Not one big overwhelming thing in one go. It's a 365 day. Oh my God, look at where I am this mm -hmm. time next year. Um, and it's just been absolutely, I have to say, Tam, I am so thrilled with how it's working, the feedback that I'm getting, the interactions in the group, how suddenly all these women, this community, have got kindred spirits. And people saying, oh, I feel like that too. And oh, that's a good suggestion, I might try that too. Or oh my God, that is brilliant, I love that you did that. And it's it's just come alive. It's, it's um, yeah, amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is, I'm, I'm super proud of it. Um, and uh, yeah, I am really, really excited about it. So it's great for um, people with adrenal fatigue who are working the program to just be able to have a supportive environment that's just mm -hmm. feeding them along each day, you mm -hmm. know, so they're not on their own. 
That sounds amazing. I'm really impressed by the level of uh, depth and resources you've made available to, to your smart, busy women. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful that you're reaching out and helping people like yourself. I mean, I know uh, I've, I've certainly seen a lot of it. I've seen it in my own family, uh, you know, uh, struggle with that. And uh, I sure wish that there was someone like you who was reaching out to people, uh, people that I knew back home. And uh, I thank you very much for all the work you're doing and all I'll link to all your, your books and programs and whatnot in the notes. And uh, thank you very much, Luis, for sharing your story, sharing your, your, your insights. It's, it's, it's really great to know that, um, you know, there's someone like you also really banging the gong on, we can help adrenal fatigue. It's not a mystery. You can recover. Yeah. And and it's and it's it it's doable. And uh I'm I'm very grateful you're you're up in Auckland doing the work you do. So thank you. Oh uh, well thank you so much for you know, I mean I'm a big fan of what you do. Um I can't wait to see all the new addiction program as well. It's just super fascinating and I think there's such um a crossover with our work. Um and obviously we see a lot of similar things in our mm -hmm. clients and patients. So um, you know, I'm sure with a lot of your work, um, you probably feel the same, but I, I, I feel like what I went through to the point of getting bedridden and so ill and then an incredible recovery journey is, I don't feel that it happened to me, I think it happened for me mm. to be able to create this stuff and to be able to, to help other people turn it around way faster than I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I do feel really privileged and and super lucky to be able to do this work and to share it with great people like you and with your people. So thank you really very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Louise. Okay. We will chat again soon. I look forward to it. You too. See ya. Bye.